Hello everyone, we are Geeks Not Nerds, I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Ben. How you doing, Vince? I'm pretty good. How Today we're- I'm great! I guess I'll wait for you to finish your sentence. How are you answer guys? Answer your question. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Today we're going to talk about time travel. Uh, this is a uh, topic that I came up with. Today's question is- this is a theoretical, silly kind of question, Vince. Imagine that you're a protagonist in a movie or a TV show or a book or something. Done. And <laughs> somebody, yeah, because the, the, the story of Vince's life is fascinating and would make for no, it would. It would make for good reading. And no, it wouldn't. <laughs> and uh, mine less so. It's like here's a story of a guy typing at his desk and making videos. Uh, the question for today is, if you were presented with the possibility to go back in time, be it uh, a mad doctor shows up with a car that goes back in time, or uh, or you yourself somehow or rather managed to invent a time machine, or somebody uh, shows up with a phone booth and says that you can go back in time... Uh, so I can complete my history paper? So you can complete your history paper. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, good. You got the reference. Um, good, good job, <laughs> Captain America. You got that reference. Whee! Um But, but the the, uh, but the question is, what would you do with that um, if you could go back in time? So the question is, and and let's also make this more specific. The rules of the time travel are that um, it, time is not a linear thing. It is malleable, and you can go back in time and change things. Let's just say that we know for sure. That can that can happen, and the reason I'm asking this, what I'm getting at is, I see a lot of things where somebody uh, is given this opportunity to go back in time and change things, and very quickly it becomes just a given for that person that the right thing to do is to try to solve some kind of problem in history that they think made things worse off than they could have been, and to try to help people by changing time. But the question is, is that always the would that always be the right thing to do uh, and I want to explore that I want to explore the way you're affecting other people's lives and um, I want to I want to explore this somewhat in a kind of you know metaphysical way so um go ahead Vince what do you think what, well, what would you do if you if you had if you had that ability if I had that ability I mean if I could travel in time I would just go experience things I wouldn't actually change anything reason being is that uh, I feel like because I changed something, we could end up in a worse place right now. The th and and I'll base that on this. The reason why, or the reason I say that, is that a lot of people they'll say like, "Oh, you if you could time travel, you wouldn't go back and kill Hitler." I've heard that several times. I, no. And uh, I would say no. Why? Because uh, you know I do think it's a fact that history does repeat itself. And uh, I think that if we don't learn from our past mistakes or uh, from past atrocities, they're eventually gonna happen. So if Hitler wasn't Hitler, then there'd be some other person that would be Hitler and the country wouldn't be prepared to handle that one, or not the country, the world wouldn't be prepared to handle that one either. So to a certain extent, uh, problems have to happen before we, uh, or like major problems have to happen before we know we even need to be prepared for it. So stuff happens, we correct it and we move on. And uh, I mean, It'd be one thing if, like, somebody set off a bunch of nukes and the entire world was destroyed. If I survived. Sure. <laughs> I would go back and correct that. That makes sense. Total destruction makes sense. See, I was going to say that, yeah, if, if it saved the whole planet, but I guess the difference is you're not changing people's lives, you know, happy people's lives at that point, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you're trying to stop genocide. When you when you go to the Star Trek Four scenario, when you go to the we've got to go back in time to grab humpback whales so we can save the future because otherwise there is no Earth. Yeah, I do that, and partly because you're not actually changing very much in the past. So you're you're not you're not affecting very many, if any, uh, people's lives really. Um, there's the there's a marine biologist, but as she says, I don't have anybody anyway. So she just comes to the future, and luckily, I guess she was never going to get married and have children. Okay, <laughs> but but but. All I'm saying is um, the the uh, the situation where I could not bring myself, Vince, to do it, and where I'm so surprised and sometimes appalled that protagonists will um, just completely take it for granted and not even think about the fact that they're kind of playing God. Is what what is it what is it that gives you the right? How do you know better than anybody else does? How like 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 at some point, um, how do you draw the line between the individual lives, between people's individual rights and the good of everyone. 
Like it's 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 so utilitarian. I can't I can't handle it. You know what I mean? Like when we just get into like 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 ethics, uh, it's it's too utilitarian for me. You mm-hmm. know, you know the, this this the good I, of the many. The, yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, I'm like, yeah, but says who? You know, it says you. And conveniently, in most things, and again, we're we're talking about this in the terms of fiction because this is where we've seen it played out. In most things. Fiction uh, things. It seems like that person always gets to come to the to to the, back to the present and conveniently gets to remember everything. So the only person that's not affected is Just you. Like Wolverine. <laughs> he remembers it all, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Except Although, for what actually happens to him in that timeline. Yeah, that, yeah. And so he has it as bad or worse than anybody. But then I. But, but again, the thing with that is, um, yeah, they've 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 changed everything, but they were preventing. Genocide, so it's kind of you know the lesser of two evils. Um, but when it's just you and you're the only person that that knows what you're doing and you have, you know, but almost I almost have a hard time saying even like, well, you don't know what's going to happen. I don't know for for me anyway. Again, just just looking at personal ethics. For me anyway, I don't know that the ends justify the means in this case. I don't know if if you're able to look at the future and tell that things really would be a lot rosier. For say even like you know three hundred years years down the line, um, if we if if we didn't have World War Two, if we didn't have Hitler, um, oh say, say the thing we were talking about <laughs> beforehand about about um about what you would you, what you would do with Hitler, is that that that, that Hitler um that, that you just go back and you make sure that Hitler goes to that art school, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> There you go. Go paint some trees, buddy. Yay! I, th- I think that's really funny because um, Hitler almost got into an art school and he didn't. And so some people have said, well, if he just went to that art school, we wouldn't have had World War II. Um, so anyway, probably. Um, I think I think Patton Oswalt said it best. He said, uh, I can't get effing trees. Mm-hmm. Screw it. I'll kill everybody in the world. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> that's in, that's important. taste. Um, but but uh, <laughs> that is important. But Patton Oswalt said it. So yeah. Okay. Well, so I guess that makes it okay. Yeah, it's not my joke. All I'm saying is, if you're offended, don't write us hate mail. Write Pat Oswalt, or you know, write us both. You know, and send I was, him hate mail. And I was about to say mail. now, now that anybody that was offended by that joke isn't going to watch Agents of Shield anymore, but he hasn't shown up in like eight episodes, so maybe they still will. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> what was what was I going to say? Um, he's fun on that show, but I just wish they he'd, they'd be there every now and again. Um, but anyway, so but here's the thing: even if for everybody that there is. Uh, like for say 300 years or more after World War II, um, we 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 get to like the closest thing to I don't think this is what would happen, but let's say we get to somehow like the closest thing to utopia. We get like a Star Trek future because we didn't have World War II and that and, and that never played out, and somehow or rather, it didn't ha- nothing like that ever happened. Um, okay, that's great for the people that are that are around, but who wasn't born now because you changed the past? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, like Amazing. there's all these lives you've changed, and now the history that you knew that you knew only exists in your mind, and now you're God. And that's kind of my problem with it is that you you at that point you have way too much power. You could almost get yourself to a place where you look at reality as just you, malleable. It's it's yours. You get you get to create it, and um, you, like you could even get yourself into this like weird. Place uh, this this weird almost I don't know if existential is the right word but this weird place in your head where that other world only exists for you so did it exist at all? You know, you know, there's, um, there's a couple of movies that, that come to freaks mind. me the heck out and I can't believe that more characters don't talk about it. There's there's two movies specifically that come to mind and and uh, one of them came out w- way before the other. It's a Ashton Kutcher movie called uh, Butterfly Effect. Butterfly Effect. Yeah. Uh, have you seen this? Uh, I know about. it. I've still never sat in and watched it. I am I'm totally gonna spoil this for everybody. Oh. So, so I do want to watch that movie, but go ahead. Okay. It the, might be very important. The the thing about Butterfly Effect and I just I think the moral of Butterfly Effect is amusing. <laughs> so the premise behind Butterfly Effect, for those of you that don't know it, is that uh, throughout this guy's life, he has these portions of his life that he can't remember, and uh, like kind of blackouts. And uh, he eventually finds out that he can time travel back to those blackout segments. So he goes to himself at that age, and he can do stuff as that person for those blackout periods. So uh, his so his consciousness is moving back, kind of like Wolverine. Uh, yes. Okay. Ex- exactly. So, he he keeps going back and changing things, trying to correct mistakes or, or make things better, and he realizes that he can't really make things better. He just keeps going and making things different or worse. And, uh, so the very end of the movie, 
La, 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 for anybody that doesn't want to hear it. So the very end of the movie, he uh, he goes back to a thing that most of us have difficulty remembering. Being in the womb. Oh, okay. That's and, where I thought you were going with that. Yeah. And he kills himself. And the the moral of Butterfly Effect, in my opinion, the moral of Butterfly Effect is that the world is a better place without Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, so he he solves everything by yep. killing it by committing suicide. Yep, in the womb, or, so, or or the sort of suicide where you never existed in yeah. the first place. He aborts himself. Extremely late term abortion. Yeah, <laughs> but he aborts wow. himself. Wow. Okay. All right. And uh, that movie's just that movie's like a, a good example of this. How you go back and you change things and you can make it worse than it was. I mean, uh, who's to say? Like, let's say let's say we go back in time and pull some strings and get Hitler into art school. Great. Maybe he still turns out to be a genocidal madman, but now he's really good at painting. So, I mean, or or you go back and you kill him, and then somebody else uh, that that was, you know, uh, Goebbels or whatever that dude's name is turns out to be the next Hitler. I mean, whatever, you know, something. Maybe you have to, like, have a complete omnipotent view of history and time and in, in future, so that you can say, well, these are the people that need to not exist in order for... So yeah, then, then you just go on a slippery slope also, of destroying. who are you to decide? Because those people all have, uh, you know, in, in, mo in most people's opinions, as we're going, I'd say, as we're going along and we don't know what's going to happen yet, and we're in the here and now, and we don't think that time travel's possible, or we sure as heck don't know how to do it right now, uh, people have the... Um, people have the right to choose. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they make the wrong choice and they, uh, you know, break laws that society can't live with, um, that, that when they impend on other people's rights, that's when people have to step in. But, you know, it, it's kind of... Um, what was that? What was that movie about? Uh, uh, like, like uh, seeing what people were going to do and then arresting them before they did it. Oh, uh, Minority Report. Minority Report. It reminds me a little bit of that, where it's like, well, they haven't done it yet, and from their perspective, from the perspective of those time periods, they haven't done it yet. You know what I mean? So if you if you go back in time, you go, well, I know what's going to happen. I'm a product of the world in which that happened. So regardless of the fact that they haven't done it yet, um, I'm going to make that choice for them and not give them the choice to make those mistakes and cause those atrocities. Now you could say, well, well, Captain Logan, you're 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 insane to say that they have the right to choose. To um, to create atrocities. No, they, you, you're right. They they don't. Nobody has the right to kill people. Nobody has the right to murder. Right. But then at the same time, just from I don't know, just from an ethical standpoint, is it is it right to for for one person to get to go back and choose who 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 lives and who doesn't based on what they from their perspective haven't done yet? Um, I I don't know. I think that's really really tough. Um, and I think the the really difficult situation for something like that kind of science fiction is that if you uh, develop that technology so you can see into the future and know this stuff's going to happen, uh, how do we actually know that's going to happen? And we're not just generating information. I mean, yeah, sure. We, we could be making stuff up, or this could be a scenario that may come to pass, but they have the right to choose, or they have free will, so then they don't. The only way you could be sure that it happens every time that that, that like that like uh, I'm I'm positive that if we don't intervene this person is going to do the thing that it seems like they're going to do based on our ability to look into the future with technology would be to let a lot of things happen for a long time and study it. Right. You know what I mean? Before you actually started stepping in. Well, but, it looks like Tammy Sue died. It means our technology's on par. <laughs> but but anyway, so um, I, I don't know, Vince. I, like, I don't think... It's one of those situations where, um, you know, classically, where, like, it's, it's too much power for one person. So then the question is... Is it a thing that could be done by committee? Is it a thing that should be done? You know what I mean? Like, uh, what if we had the? What if we uh, developed the technology like we've developed so many other technologies, where suddenly we have the ability to control a thing we thought we couldn't control? Um, how many things now are we able to control that we used to to think generations? ago that we could not control right we can control genomes now in a way we never we never we never could um and then you know 100 years ago we didn't even know what dna was um we i, I think um and then, and then and then things like you know okay we can go into space now um we didn't we there there's a barrier we didn't we'd be able to, we've broken the sound barrier um there's talk now that warp travel might actually be possible for the longest time we thought only light could travel at the speed of light but now there's been a lot of research that maybe a physical object can actually go to the speed of light and that and that star trek level warp technology 
strategy is maybe possible. So there's all these things that we know we can do, or we know we, we very likely might be able to do. What if time travel became one of those things? Um, maybe a far-fetched thing, maybe not. I mean, obviously, you know, with uh, with quantum theory and stuff, we've been talking about the possibility of time travel for a long time now. Um, what, what if suddenly we could do it? Would we have a responsibility to use it, or would we have a responsibility not to? And, and that's, you know, that's I don't know, that that freaks me out. That's the, that's the big question. I don't know how you use that responsibly. The, uh, the other thing that comes to mind, the other movie, is uh, About Time. And uh, About Time, I think, is a fantastic movie. I, actually, I recommend About Time. It's a good movie. So, uh, Butterfly Effect, I think, is just funny. But <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting, but funny. So, Especially if you're Vince and you don't like Ashton Kutcher. Not really. I mean, no, that, no, he's, that's he's so, okay. That's whatever. so funny. <laughs> The moral so, of the story is the world. No, he was playing a character. Okay, you can't. Oh. See, it's like with poetry. You can't talk to a poet and be like, "I don't like what you said." No, the speaker, not. See, it's like that. I see what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in about time, this guy and and here's kind of a middle of the movie example. Uh, Sorry, Vince. I should have let you get to this earlier. It's about time. Uh, I like it. So. Uh, in the middle of this movie, he's realizing that he has these powers that he has. He just has the natural ability to travel in time, which makes it... I don't know if that's fantasy or science fiction. But, uh... <laughs> It's more fantasy. Anyway, so he has this uh, this this innate ability to travel in time, and all the men in his family have had the ability to do this. So he has counsel from his dad, yada yada. And uh, the big thing is that there's there's an event in the middle of this movie that uh, is a kind of a horrible event, and, and he caused it to happen. And he needs to find, or he thinks he caused it to happen anyway. He needs to find a way to correct it. And uh, so he goes back in time, and he corrects that. And then he comes back into the future. And he looks at how his life has changed just because he has reversed the situation. So uh, things like that, like, like for example, the major thing that he realized when he'd made kind of a, a mistake that he couldn't deal with by changing the past was he went back before his child was born, changed something unrelated to his child, which changed the date at which he and his wife... Uh, conceived the child, which changed the gender of the child. Oh, that's awesome. So I need to see this movie. That the, is precisely what I'm talking about. So he realized... Because so many things do butterfly effect in way too broad of terms. I don't think about that stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so interesting. And for those of you who are like, so what? He still has a kid. It's not about the kid. It's about bonding with the particular individual that now is a different person. Well, so. and and you you could argue that we killed someone. Yeah, you see what I'm true. saying? Because th because um, if that child was the other gender, or even if it wasn't, even if you changed whatever minute thing, um, you know, it's all about what actually makes up a person. It's about identity. Um, we you kind of killed that person and replaced it with another person. Is that the same person? Is a female version of Vince in an alternate or on an, on an alternate Earth still Vince? That'd be one ugly chick. No, I'm it's a saying. totally different person. <laughs> With different experiences and uh, just just inherently the the the, the, the you know you know the the female experience versus the male experience is, is naturally going to be a different thing no matter no matter what you do oh yeah um you know so like no you killed someone mm -hmm. at least in, in, at least in my opinion obviously this is arguable but yeah, I mean yeah, uh, yeah, yeah that it's, makes sense it's fascinating so. This movie, I think you'd really like it. I think I own it, if you want to borrow it. I would like to borrow that. I didn't even know about uh, it. By the... Um, when did that come out? A uh, few years ago, I think. Oh, okay. Somehow I missed it. I think it was like a 2012, 2013 movie. Oh, okay. So it's recent. Yeah. Not terribly old. The uh, The moral of the movie might have some bearing on the conversation. Yeah, sure. And uh, the moral of can, the movie... Can you, can, you, can you deliver it without telling me how it ends? That's that's the tough thing, because the, the entire well, movie... I'll bite the bullet, it's alright. The entire movie is about... Time. About, well... The entire movie about time is about uh, learning how to use these, these, uh, these powers to go back and change the past. And uh, the... Essentially... The idea is, and I think that it's pretty obvious toward about the middle of the movie, you know this is where it's going, but I won't tell you how he gets there. The uh, He gets to the end and he realizes that uh, his time travel ability is only really good for re-experiencing things. And uh, he doesn't use his time travel ability to go back and change the past anymore. Because he realizes that... Uh, it's going to alter what has come to pass. And even the stuff that hurts. 
Even the stuff that's not fun to deal with are things that uh, develop a new person or develop a, a human being into something that they're going to be. So he says, well, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. And well, I mean, you know, we obviously, first of all, um, people need difficulties in their life to overcome to become better people. That's mm-hmm. the first thing is, is uh, people, people strive through, through hardship. And that's not, but that's not a justification for crime. That's not a justification for <laughs> the thing, the, oh, well, no, you should let that person do horrible things to people because they'll they'll learn from it, they'll be better. No, that's not what I'm yeah. saying at all. Um, if I had the ability to go back in time and I saw um, someone being beaten up in an alleyway or I saw, or, heaven forbid, like, 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 a, like a kid getting brutalized by a parent or something, even though I was back in time, I'd have a really hard time not stepping in. Yeah, well, you see what I'm saying. So I mean, there's there is that. I think go back. If I went back in time and saw that stuff, I wouldn't change it. But no, no, I'm just saying it would be hard for me not to. If I fair enough. If I were to see it now, now. yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's there's a difference because uh, who knows what comes to pass because of what they did. But uh, now it's not changing anything. If I do something now, I can affect a life. So this is what I keep coming back to. I just feel like, however you go about it, I don't see how it's not a too much power for one person and b anything but selfish and self fulfilling. Mm-hmm. Not self fulfilling, but but um, but like uh, you know, self maybe even indulgent is the right word. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because like you know, you could say, well, you know, you're you're selfless and that you're going back to stop atrocities so that people in the future you know can benefit from that. But then, still, you're the one that gets to pick. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You you you're getting to choose for everyone else. I mean, like, if you could get votes from everyone in the world about what sh- what you should go back and fix, I could see it more, kind of maybe. But even still, you know what yeah. I mean? I don't I don't know, man. Um, and w- w- the conflict I have about this is, I hesitate to say that you shouldn't mess with nature because we all mess with nature all the time in lots of different ways that I agree with. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, like, uh, you know, if I were to if I were to be a complete purist and I say, oh, you can't mess with nature, first of all, I probably wouldn't be as big of a science fiction fan as I am. Um, I, there's a lot of technologies I wouldn't use, and I probably wouldn't take medicine. So <laughs> that's fair. So so that's that, so that's a tough thing. It, okay, if we actually had time travel, how should we use it? Um, I would say. If you could somehow or rather be absolutely certain that you couldn't, that you wouldn't change anything, I think you would need to mix this with some kind of cloaking technology or something. Um, I would say that it would be incredibly beneficial for historians, obviously. Yeah. Um, the big thing that we, like, I wish time travel were possible if it could only be used in the right hands, um, so that we could go back in time and settle disputes. You know what I mean? Um, so that we could... I mean, there, there are so many problems that we could begin to fix. I don't, I don't mean we could fix right away, but there's a lot of problems in society that I think that we could begin to start to deal with just by going back and knowing what exactly happened. Um, I try not to get too political or religious or whatever on the channel, but if we go back and tell exactly what, what happened at the time of Christ, that would be really helpful. You know what I mean? Like, it'd be really good if we, if we could go back and actually document those things. Um, because what's really interesting is... A lot of why we don't know what we, why, why we can't know things that a lot of people like to, you know, um, I, I either profess to know or, you know, believe in really hard, but they, can't, they still can't really know, is because we didn't have video surveillance <laughs> and, and, and stuff, you know what I mean? Like, what if we See, could go back and actually document things? And that's not to say that even with the video, the history doesn't get rewritten and stuff. I get that. But you see what I'm saying. So so I think here's, here's the crux of the situation. Yeah. When you fire up your time machine, <laughs> it leaves deposits of uh, large, extremely heavy stones that are set up in certain ways that ancient people would have a difficult time achieving. Uh, sometimes it uh, you know carves those stones into faces, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and sometimes it just leaves uh, uh, odd Mayan esque structures around. Yeah, and you also have to build them really really huge and in and and uh, in like like f- four sides with a big point on top. <laughs> mm-hmm. Whether. <laughs> 
And sometimes they end up Just right the in the middle of the ocean and nobody it, can see it, but bad things happen there. I guess pyramids are in three sides because they're pyramids. So are, you, are you guys picking up on essentially all of the <laughs> all of the mysteries? Yeah, we just solved everything. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's time machine <laughs> deposits. There is a uh, this is this is where this came from in the first place um, for me, Vince. I, uh, I I've I've been reading a book and I, I I still haven't gotten around to finishing it. Um, I, I I've read about half of. Um, a book that Stephen King wrote uh, that and I always forget the title of it. Is it is it six eleven sixty three? It's the I forget. It's it's the it's the date that JFK died, and mm-hmm. and the and the uh, the whole book, of course, is uh, a guy. Uh, there's a conceit where a guy's able to go back in time, and he's going to try to stop the JFK assassination. And it, that that's that's one of those things, just like with Hitler, that's done a lot, but Stephen King does it in a really original, fresh way, and I really like it. Um, it seemed almost like a dare kind of thing, where it was like, and I'm not saying this is how it happened, but it reads like a dare. It's like somebody said, Stephen King, you can't do that really cliche sci-fi plot. And make it work, and he's like, "Yes, I can." Yeah. And then he wrote it. Um, but my my big beef with it, and maybe this gets cleared up uh, if I finish the whole book. But my big beef with it at the beginning was this guy keeps talking about how um, how many lives he could uh, he could potentially uh, help and stuff if if he if he just went back and stopped the JFK assassination, and it does get really, really personal and stuff, and there's a lot of really good details about, like, the butterfly effect and how, you know, uh, stopping uh, one one atrocity can lead to other ones and, um, and, that, and that kind of thing. But I don't... I, the thing that I couldn't get my mind around was that there, there, there wasn't ever, at least in what I've read so far, but I would think that he would, he would talk about this at the beginning, wouldn't you have this, this, this internal kind of, kind of conflict where you would say to yourself... Um, is it really right for me to change time at all because of the people that might be born or the people that would die earlier than they would otherwise or you, you know you know that kind of thing um, does it really d- does does like a better future really trump the individuals you know that's that's interesting when when you look at the JFK thing I think there's a lot of people that uh, look back on JFK or e- even at the time before he died people were looking on JFK like uh, him existing is going to make the country better forever like if you could go back and get Teddy Roosevelt and JFK and just make them immortal and run the country it would be a much better world <laughs> and, uh, so I think that and there's there's a comedy album out there I, I forget the name of the comedy album but uh, the idea is that this guy is really good at impersonating JFK JFK, so he writes these uh, these jokes about JFK as if it's family. It's all clean. It's good stuff. Look it up if you can find it, because I've given you su- such few details. But uh, the thing about it is, is that I think the reason I bring this up is that this is indicative of uh, how people felt about, or how a lot of people felt about JFK at the time, is that uh, they started making this scenario where he survived and, uh, well, not survived, it was before he died, where they made this scenario where he was able to change how many times a person can be president and is in now his, like, 50th term or something like that. And he's, it's it's really kind of sad when you look at how they're projecting into the future how great, like, how how uh, statuesque of a figure this guy is. Yeah. And uh, then, then he dies. So I think, uh, to some extent, I think people look back and say, well, this guy would have fixed everything, you know. It, and, uh, you know, to some extent, you need great villains and great heroes in your history. Yeah, there's no way to know exactly, but who am I? And I guess part of the reason that I think about this a lot is because of how much I don't like the last episode of Star Trek Voyager. <laughs> um, in, in, uh, in Endgame, I'm going to throw this out there real quick, uh, and this will, this will help illustrate um, what I'm talking about. In Endgame, uh, Janeway goes back in time to conveniently the end of the seventh season, because that's where we're ending the show. Um, she's she's in like you know eighteen twenty something years in the future, and they've get, and they made it, or maybe it's even quite a bit later than that. And they they made it back um, they, finally to the uh, the Alpha Quadrant um, years before, but it took much longer than the seven years, and. In in the process, uh, Janeway and or, I'm sorry, Chakotay and Seven of Nine, who had gotten who had, who had uh, gotten together and um, the writer just dating or got married or something, they both died in the interim. And Admiral Janeway essentially goes back in time um, to 
again, conveniently, the the day where we are in the show right now, I guess just because basically that's where we are, and they contrive a thing because of where we are in, in proximity to the Borg and stuff, and there's there's a thing she knows about where she could get them, um, you know, back home. Uh, she, she goes back in time pretty much just to save Chakotay and Seven of Nine. Why does she do that? Because those were her friends. Okay, but what about all the other people that died on the ship before that? Apparently, she doesn't care about those people. Um, well, she is the devil. You see, what I'm saying, like, like why, why didn't, <laughs> why didn't she go back earlier than that and try to, and try to change stuff? You see, what I'm saying. So, um, and then, uh, from from her perspective on a timeline that was going along just fine, and the, the Starfleet and Federation, they weren't at war. They were everything was in good shape. What about all? So she does that just so those two people can be together. But what about all the other people who got married and had children and had careers and all that stuff that she's now probably that, that some of those some of those that she's now wiped away because she had her ship get back home a decade or more before it was supposed to. Huh. And she did that for purely selfish reasons. You see what I'm saying? And the problem with the show was that it it, it didn't. It didn't address those things, and it played it like she was heroic for doing that. That's really problematic. You see what I'm saying? And that that kind of thing has always really bugged me. Um, All right. Indeed. So again, for me, it's not about how many people can can you can you can you help and save. It's about um, well. All, all these people that didn't have the lives they had, or maybe wouldn't even exist, wouldn't agree with you on whether or not they were helped, mm-hmm. <laughs> because they didn't get to they didn't get a say in the in, in the matter. Um, I think it is killing people. I I think I'm I'm with you. I think it's it's something to noodle. I just don't think we're going to come up with an answer in the here and now because there's no time travel. But anyway, that's just that's that's my that's my thoughts on it. I like it. Let's go to rants. All right, uh, let's go to rants, Vince. Go ahead. I was watching a uh, commercial today, and it was Bush's Baked Beans. And uh, now here's the deal. This commercial has a bowl of beans and uh, a bowl of vegetables, and all these kids are eating the vegetables. They're going, eh, they're vegetables. And then they switch over to the beans, and the guy in the commercial's like, look how much the kids like Bush's Baked Beans. Just don't tell them that it's a vegetable. And the the mother's like, (laughs) shh, don't tell them it's a vegetable. So, uh... I'm sitting here watching this, and I look over at the person next to me, and I say, technically, it's legume. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, it's a bean. Uh, it's, it's vegetation. It grows. I get it. But calling beans a vegetable is like calling a potato a vegetable. Is this really your rant? Yes. That beans aren't a vegetable? And, uh, and what, what bothers me okay. is that we try to get kids to eat vegetables. Why? Because they're good for you, and their vegetables are unlikely to make you gain extra weight. Uh, carbohydrates are. So if your kid only wants to eat bread, and then you hand him potatoes, or if you hand him beans, you're handing him the same kind of thing. So they're carbohydrates. In other words, my rant is not that it's false advertising. My rant is that it's a disservice to the country to try to convince people that your carbohydrate food is indeed a regular green vegetable. That is yeah. insults me, guys. Yeah, and furthermore... Well, in a way, it is false advertising, really. Uh, yeah. Because, sure because it the thing be is, No, no, you, you're right, because the thing is, you're saying it's a vegetable, and, 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 you're, and you're saying that, well, it's not technically wrong, but the thing is, the implication is that it's the same kind of thing as a green vegetable. So there's, an, there, there's something implied there. Yeah, and also, it is... Bush's baked beans. You're not just eating beans, you're eating sugar and molasses and brown sugar soaked beans. So not only is it a carbohydrate, granted it's the only carbohydrate with a full strand of protein. I get that. Whatever. So it's not exactly the same thing as handing somebody a potato. You're handing somebody essentially a potato that is injected with protein. So so here's the deal. You're handing them a bowl of sugar and carbohydrates and telling them that it's a green vegetable. And uh, to you, Bush's Baked Beans, how dare you? And I mean that sincerely. How dare you? <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, I, I can't I can't disagree with that. I and, and and I guess and I guess the big thing that that I I mean that I would latch onto that 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 where it's a problem is that you're pretending like it's better for you than it is. Yeah, and it's so not, you jerks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I 
it really it really bothers me because we're living in a time where people are there there's like mac and cheese baby food and and where people just don't understand the uh, that what what is in actual food they say well this is low fat it's licorice <laughs> of course it's low fat it's also incredibly bad for you <laughs> Think about it before you do it. That's all. And there's yeah. people out there that are like, well, well, red wine's good for you. So surely a certain amount of alcohol is good for you. No. Red wine's good for you because of antioxidants. So in other words, don't sell your uh, your red wine as being purely good for you. The alcohol in it is not good for you. Go drink some green tea or oolong tea. There's antioxidants in that. So that is much better for you. More antioxidants, and it doesn't have the uh, the vitamin prevention or the vitamin reabsorption prevention prevention that alcohol does. So in other words, it just bothers me when people say, "Well, it's whole wheat, so it's not fattening." No, it is fattening. You just can't eat that much of it. It's use your brains, real like look, do some research, <laughs> and, uh, and we we have a very ignorance of bliss thing with food, right? Oh God, yes. Like it's kind of the same thing as is, is the way a, a lot of people look at like uh, I don't know, like like bacteria and stuff, where it's like if you can't see it, then mm -hmm. it's not there. You know what I mean? Like, and you know, here's here's something for for all you guys out there that are like, well, I didn't. I guess being sanitary is what I was trying to think of. You know, it's the same thing as that. I didn't get human waste on my hands when I left the bat when I when I went to the bathroom. So I don't need to wash my hands. It's not about that. Washing your hands in the bathroom for all of you who don't. <laughs> I'm not talking to you who do. The reason you wash your hands when you go to the bathroom is because regularly washing your hands prevents the spread of disease and sickness. And it's a convenient time to do it because there's a sink right there. Yeah, there's you're going to a place that has plumbing. Anyway, yeah. so wash your hands while you're in there. It's not about washing the mess off of your hands. It's, and the reason which, you I mean, if you've got mess on your hands, wash your hands. And the reason you're doing it <laughs> after instead of before is because, duh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just in case, why the heck not? So, And this has been another public service announcement from Vincent Haskins. There's like three rants in a row. And, other, and also... <laughs> For everybody, everybody of driving age. Hey, can I just gotta stop you real fast? There's something really funny. Just hold that pose. There's something really funny about you pointing at the camera wearing that shirt. It's, this is very like <laughs> Uncle Vince wants you. <laughs> Unc Uncle Vince wants you to check your blind spot, <laughs> use your turn signal, and don't cut people off. Your turn signal is not a lever that allows you to turn. It is a signal, hence turn signal, that lets the other people around you know what you're about to do. So if you flick your turn signal signal and jump into the next lane, you're still being a bad person. Oh, I was about to slip there. <laughs> Vince, uh, if it takes you half an hour next week to come up with a rant, that's on you, pal. Yep, that's, that's a bunch of them. <laughs> there you go. Well, two of them were particularly geeky. One of them was about TV. So. And, and remember, whenever you merge off the highway, wash your hands. Okay, uh, so <laughs> my rant today is about this controller. I bought this controller... This, is this one the, in particular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just bought this. So, 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 look, look. This is a this is this is a um a USB controller made oh. to look like a Super Nintendo controller, cool. um, made by Retronic, and um, I bought this so that I could play uh stuff on my computer that uh, makes a lot of sense to play with an SNES controller, uh, namely the uh, Angry Video Game. Uh, nerd uh -huh. game because it is essentially um a a uh, modern Super Nintendo game and um, also Meat Boy. I wanted to play this uh, uh, for for uh, for you know modern side scrollers on Steam. Um, my my rant is very simple. Steam doesn't allow you to use nearly enough different controllers. Uh, I bought this thing last week. I can't use it on Steam. Um, I can only use it apparently with emulators, and that's that really kind of sucks. Um, and I can't blame Retronic for that because um, Steam seems to be really selective about what controllers you can use and what you can't. Um, when you plug in a controller, um, it says that. Um, 
Well, actually, not even when you plug one in because um, it doesn't recognize this. But but when you when you go into the menu to change the control the control scheme on a USB controller, um, it says you know you know uh, we recommend that you use a 360 controller, but um, if you want to use some other controller, uh, map it out here. Well, I, I can't. You know, I plug this in and it doesn't work. And I you know I updated drivers and make sure everything works and it and it doesn't work. So that was really disappointing to me. Uh, there's a lot of these really cool uh, retro things out right now where you can get uh, re Retronic, and I think there's some other brands that make this that make these. Um, Retronic's got an NES one. They've got a 360, or not a 360. They've got a um, N64 one, which unless you're playing N64 games, I don't know why in the world you'd want that one. Um, I, I never found that to be real to, to be a real comfortable way to play video games, but whatever. They've got it because it makes you think about 1998. Uh, and <laughs> I think I'd just use a PS2 controller for that. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, especially because it's... That's how I play video games. Especially because there are a lot of games on that system that would have been a lot easier to uh, to control, to play, if you had a second stick. Because mm -hmm. there are a lot of things on N64 where, um, essentially, your second stick was the four yellow buttons on the right. <laughs> and that was always kind of weird. So, uh, you know, there, there's there's that. Uh, and the, the, uh, the only modification I would have made to Dreamcast was add a second stick. Because uh, everything else about Dreamcast was marvelous, but um, that that's that's a thing. But anyway, so um, I don't know. I just think it's kind of sad that I can't use this on Steam, and uh, it's the reason I bought it. So that's I don't know. That's my rant. I was really looking forward to being able to to play uh, that game with a Super Nintendo controller. Just so you know, if you is this merge, be rage again. Oh my God, it is. If you merge Come on. and you cut another person off, or you run somebody road, or you hit them, I'm just saying it could be somebody's grandmother, sister, brother, father, dad. It could be uh, a psycho. All I'm saying is, if you hit me, I'll turn into a psycho. <laughs> and um, and and Vince, don't go back in time to make it to where that person didn't. <laughs> Mer merge to hit you because you don't you don't know who you might be causing to not be born. Oh yeah, and that's not that's not fair, Vince. It's not for you to decide. See what I do is somebody merges into me, I just run them off the road with my car. I just push them until they go off. Is is that what you do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's playing God, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, that's not I would, true at all, by the way. Uh, I, I know I got a little bit more into the like the uh, philosophy realm, and Vince got a little bit, a little bit was a little more in the uh, kind of practical side of the whole time travel thing. Uh, but we would love to know what you folks think um, about uh, about time travel, and if it were ever, you know, actually possible, where it was a thing that um, that you know that we we as as you know humanity could use uh, to to our advantage or to our detriment. Uh, how how do you think that society at large should use time travel? And if you individually were given the opportunity to go to go back in time, what would you do? If you change anything, what would you change? That's a really interesting question. Um, if you okay, let's say let's do this real quick. If you were forced to change one thing, if you did have to change a thing, regardless of the consequences, what would you change? I got a little serious on this. What what would you what would you change if you had to change something? Ooh, that's a hard one. Do you already have one in mind? No, I don't. I was I, I I'm I'm on the fence about it. It's hard for me not to immediately go to like like silly selfish stuff like you know well. Um, I'd I'd go I'd go back and um, like you know change the way Enterprise was was conceived. Um, but <laughs> I would go back and make myself change my pants. What? <laughs> so I don't actually change anything. Just change my pants. Uh, oh 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 okay okay all right well let's see. see. That's a cop out. I'm just kidding. Yeah that is a that is a cop. See see in my mind I would go back and let's choose be more somebody. Theor theoretical. <laughs> I would go back and find a creator that I enjoyed. Oh, that like that died, died prematurely, and I would That's try to find one. some way to save him. Now, now something like uh, the trouble is, is if if you go back and you save John Belushi from himself, then Ghostbusters changes at its core. So it's a completely sure, different thing. But then you save John Belushi. Yeah, and then and what else might he have given us, right? And I mean, mm -hmm. you can say this for a lot of comedians and stuff, right? Or I think I would probably go back and s save Chris Farley. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's tough. Um, if if I had to pick a person to save, I'm not I'm not sure who it would be. I I think, yeah. Wow. Because things I would be most interested in would be to, like I said, to kind of go back in time and, and and figure out mysteries. 
You know what I mean? Like, I'd like to go back in time and find out how um, how exactly George Reeves died. But you're not necessarily... Like that. But saving a... You're yeah. not necessarily changing but, anything. But no, you, no, you're not. You're not, you're not. And I guess I'm just... I'm having a hard time deciding what exactly I would change. Wow. So, like, I put myself on the spot. Because I was like, here's an interesting thing to do. I, and but now, I think you have up. a good point. That, that'd be something cool to do with the time travel. Go back and, like, uh, like then you just know. You know you know what happened to Jimmy Hoffa. You know what happened to all those people. Uh, we wouldn't be talking about the magic bullet because we would just know we would go back and find out yeah so i would go back and 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 uh either make the dreamcast happen earlier or give it a better game library so that it stuck around <laughs> it's fair <laughs> um boy i don't know i guess i guess i guess i'd have, I'd have to get that, give that more thought um, i i guess sometimes this is kind of about like where your where your head is right now you know what I mean? Like, there's people I've known that I might want to go back and try to and try to save, or, or like, or like, um, you know, um, let them know when they were gonna go so they could maybe change, make changes in their life to where that wouldn't happen. Just like personal, personal, like friends and people I've known. Not that I've known a lot of people that have died, but there's a couple. But there was yeah some comic on the internet. I. And I'm not gonna. I think it was called. Uh, I'd love to have to have seen Heath Ledger's career after Dark Knight. Yeah, that's a good point. I th I think it was called. Uh, we'll say jerks with time machines because I think the word they use isn't you know. jerks with time machines. Yep. So this this uh, this jerk goes into the past and see meets J.K. Rowling before she <laughs> writes Harry Potter and says, "You're going to become an international star. You're going to write one of the greatest children's books in history." She says, "Great. What's it about?" And then he says something ridiculous like, "It's about a flying raccoon that wears underpants on its head." <laughs> Go write the book. <laughs> And I'm here to make sure that you write that book. <laughs> I forget where I saw that. I think it was. Jerks with time machines. That sounds awesome. It was pretty funny. Well, anyway, um, so yeah, leave comments. We'd love to see what uh, you folks would change or uh, or or uh, what you would do with time travel. And anyway, uh, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and leave you now. But we'll see you again next week. Uh, if there's anything you'd like to talk about in a future video, leave those things in the comments as well. We haven't done one of these theoretical things in a long time, and these are really fun. Yeah. So uh, if you come up with those, um, feel free to do that and make us you know um, bash our skulls in trying to. Uh, Try, trying trying to get our heads around um, crazy desert island sorts of scenarios. And in the meantime, we'll see you again next week. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince, reminding you to support your local comic book store and obey the rules of the road. <laughs> <laughs> and beans are carbohydrates. And um, Steam should make one of these <laughs> that I can use. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Thanks, folks. See you later. <laughs> that was a little fun. Yeah, that was fun.